Welcome to the first in a series of demonstrations on the graph data structure. What we're going to be starting out with is a look at a graph implementation, uh, specifically looking at a graph implemented as an adjacency matrix, and trying to determine what kind of graph that adjacency matrix represents. So we're going to draw out a graph corresponding to this adjacency matrix. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out what kind of graph we've got in the first place. Now, if we take a look at the matrix, the rows and columns are labeled A, B, C, D, and E, which means we have five vertices, which we're going to draw out and label them A, B, C, D, and E. Now, the contents of the matrix itself are numeric, which means that there's going to be some kind of weight associated with the edges between each vertex. Now, if these had been Boolean instead, we would say that it was an unweighted graph, but since we have numbers, we're going to associate those with the edges. The other thing that we can determine is that by taking a look at the main diagonal, and the values on either side. The values on either side of the main diagonal aren't identical. So for example, uh, the value at row one, column two is not the same as the value at row two, column one. What this means is the matrix is not symmetric and therefore the graph is bidirectional. So we're going to have to draw arrowheads as we go on each of our edges. So let's start out with the first row. and take a look at the edges that originate at A. Now there's two edges originating at A, one to vertex B with a weight of three, and another one to vertex E with a weight of one. Now again, this is a directed graph, so we're drawing arrowheads on each edge as we go. There's only one edge originating at B, and that's an edge to D, with weight 2. C has three edges originating, and they have different weights. We have one from C to A, with weight 4, one from C to B, with weight 2, and one from C to E with weight 5. There are two edges originating from D, one that goes to C with weight 6, and one that goes to E with weight 1. And then finally, in the last row of our matrix, we have two edges originating at row E, one back to A with weight 1. Now notice that we already have an edge from A to E with weight 1, and the edge going back will also have the same weight. So instead of drawing in another edge, let's just draw in another arrowhead, indicating that this edge happens to be bidirectional. And the other one is an edge from E to D with weight 3. Now, although we already have an edge from D to E, we can't just draw in another arrowhead because this new edge has a different weight. So I'll have to draw in another line with an arrow going in the opposite direction and label this one as having weight three. And that's our complete graph based on that adjacency matrix. For the second demonstration, we're going to take a look at a different implementation of a graph. In this case, a graph implemented as an adjacency list. There are six vertices labeled A through F. So we'll start out by drawing our graph by drawing those six vertices. Now we don't know exactly where the best place to draw these vertices are, so we'll just kind of take a guess and spread them apart nicely so that we have lots of room to draw on edges. 
The first item in our adjacency list shows us all of the edges originating at vertex A. Now A has an edge going to C. So we'll draw on that one. And in the absence of any evidence to the contrary, we're going to make this a directed edge from A to C. The second item shows us that B has two edges originating at B, one to D and one to E. C has three edges, one returning back to A. Now in this case, we don't have any kinds of weights, so we'll just draw in an arrow back to A one to D, and one to E. D has an edge going to B. Well, we already have an edge from B to D, so this is just now a bidirectional edge. And one back to C, again. Just another arrowhead on an existing edge. E has three edges, one returning back to B, draw in another arrowhead, one back to C, and one to F. And finally, the last item in our adjacency list shows us that there is an edge from F returning back to E. If we take a careful look at our graph, we can see that all of the edges that we've drawn in, in fact, have arrowheads on both ends. In other words, our graph is undirected. Now, there was no way for us to tell that from actually looking at the original adjacency list. It's uh, just something that we had to discover as we went along. But that's our complete graph.